Being scared to start out in investing is a very common fear, but it really shouldn't be. A lot of the concerns are around being scared of losing your money, fearing that the stock market is about to crash at any moment, and convinced that you don't actually have enough money to start investing. Sound familiar? Well, in this video, I'm going to attempt to alleviate those concerns so you can get started out on your personal finance journey today. So without further ado, I'm Kozan from Financial Manners, helping you be better with your money. Let's start off with why we should even be bothered with investing at all. And the answer is down to two simple things. One, record low interest rates and B, inflation. As you may know, the Bank of England base rate is at an all time low of 0.1%, which means that the mechanism that most people tend to use when saving for the long term, the savings account, will be earning you next to nothing on interest. I had a quick look at what my interest rates were for my savings account. Mine was actually 0.09% and my partner's was even worse, 0.01. Yay. Now these low interest rates aren't great. However, it's not really the problem. But if you add in inflation into the mix, then it does become a problem. Inflation is the general increase in prices and the fall in purchasing value of your money. Looking at the history, inflation on an annual average hovers around the 2% mark here in the UK, which means that bread that used to cost one pound one year ago now cost one pound and two pence, or that property that used to cost 200,000 pounds now costs 204,000 pounds. So this means if the interest rate from your savings account doesn't beat the inflation rate, then in real terms, you're actually losing money because the purchasing power of your money has actually decreased because everything else is going up in price. Price. So what we have to do is find a way to save our money that gives us a return that either matches or better yet beats the inflation rate and investing is one of those ways that can do that. Investments can generate very impressive returns with averages ranging from 6 to 10% over the long term. The S&P 500 which comprises of America's top 500 companies is considered a benchmark when measuring market returns and this has about a 10% average return which has lasted for almost a century. Let's address some of the fears when it comes to investing. Now, the first one addresses a combination of very similar fears. One being that you are scared of losing your money. Second, you are fearing of an economic crash and the stock market will collapse. And the third one, you are very concerned about trying to time the market at the best possible moment. There is a very famous saying that is constantly used within the personal finance world, and that is, it is all about time in the market market, not timing the market, which basically means we should be focusing on maximizing our time invested within the market rather than timing it. Basically, the best time to invest is now. If you look at these graphs provided by Morningstar, which is a financial research company, these graphs provide some really, really interesting evidence. So if we look at the first graph, which shows an annualized return on a one year basis between the years of 1926 and 2019, we can see that the market itself has actually had more periods of gain than it has losses. But if we do look at those losses, they are considered quite substantial. You have even some that go close to sort of the minus 50% mark, minus 25% mark. So although there are far more gains, the losses are quite substantial. Now let's look at the next graph, which shows annualized returns for five years, which means that if you invested in the market, you waited for five years before realizing your profits. Now you can see in this circumstance, the periods of loss are greater reduced than the previous example. And where we do have losses, you can see they are drastically less painful than the previous example as well. Now we can go even further and look at an annualized return of 15 years. Now with this example, you can see that there's actually no recorded period of loss. This reinforces that we really shouldn't be worried about timing the market. We can expect the market to have short term bumps, but as long as you're investing in the market for the long term, we should be able to ride out those bumps and see an overall gain at the point of withdrawal. By the way, if you are enjoying this video please be sure to like comment and subscribe with notification bell on i release a video every single week talking about all things personal finance with the ultimate aim of helping you be better with your money now the next one is investing is expensive now this was probably true a few years ago however with technology the barriers of entry to the investing market has drastically reduced you can start from as little as one pound which is a great way to test the investment waters apps like moneybox eVesta and wealthify allow you to do this. Trading apps like Trading212 and Free Trade also allow you to start investing with 
with as little as a few pounds. However, these apps are more focused on investing in specific stocks, unlike the previous examples where you can actually invest in a market through things called index funds. If you do want to sign up with Trading212, I'll put my affiliate link down below in the description box. So when you use that link to sign up, you and I will get a free share when we do sign up, which is a win-win for everyone. Personally, I use Vanguard, which is another platform which allows you to invest in the market, although it does tend to have a higher starting cost than the ones I mentioned previously. So I use Vanguard and Trading212 for my investment portfolio. Now, I did do a quick calculation to see how much of my own personal wealth was spread across investments and savings. Now, actually 10% of my wealth is actually only sitting in savings accounts. This is for emergency funds, day-to-day uh, -day living, and maybe for other short-term costs such as holidays, etc., etc. And the remaining 90% is held in investments. So why start now? Now there is a secret ingredient that allows wealth to grow and I have already mentioned it before so let's see if you are paying attention. It's something that is in very limited supply and once you use it you cannot get it back. It's time of course. The earlier you start investing the more time your wealth has to grow. Let's take a quick example. Let's say we have Ross who saves £1,000 per month in his investment account. He is currently aged 25 and he does this from 25 all the way up to the age of 35. So he's doing this for 10 years. But once he's stopped investing, he actually leaves the money in his investment account until he reaches 65, which is his retirement age. Now Chandler and Joey do the exact same thing. However, Chandler starts investing when he's at age 35 and Joey does it a little bit later down the line at 45. Now, other than that, they've done the exact same thing as Ross. They both contribute 1,000 pounds per month for 10 years, but they leave the money until they reach the age of 65, which is when they retire. And up until that point, the return on their investment has always been 7%. Now, if you look at their ending balances, we can see that Ross has far more money saved in his investment account compared to Chandler and Joey. He has almost twice as much as Chandler and almost four times as much as Joey. And that was because he saved a lot earlier than the other two. Now this really hammers home why time is such an important ingredient when we try to grow out our wealth. Because you can see that over the long term, the effects of compounding has an exponential effect on our wealth. So where do we go from here? One of the easiest ways to start out your investment journey is to look into something called index funds. These funds are generally low cost compared to other types of investment products and these funds are a great way to try and capture diversity within your portfolio which is a great way of safeguarding you from market downturns. And then once you get more comfortable with that you can start looking at other investment options that might be of interest to you. For example buying a stock within a company. But the point is that you should continue to educate yourself on this topic. There's a whole host of resources available to us, particularly online. You've got books, you've got websites, you've got blogs, you've got even YouTube channels like mine to help you get started with the basics. Hep, I've even got a simple walkthrough when it comes to picking out your very first index fund. I'll put a link in the description box down below so you can get started on that right away. Cool, so that is it for this week's episode. Let me know in the comment section down below if you found this video really useful or if you do indeed have any more questions when it comes to investing. And as always, if you did find it very useful, please do smash that like button. That does wonders for the YouTube algorithm and the growth of my channel. And I release a video every single week. So if you want to keep up to date with those, hit the subscribe button as well. See you later. Bye.